So what's up guys how do you do welcome to today's show program users tv in this class we're going to look at an example of http flow how to use it to download of course as you can see right here uh, json data and then render in a combo box not in a combo box but in a list box now as we download our data you can see our list box is actually responsive okay so we're going to use they'll do it of course asynchronously now you can see this is the json data that we've actually downloaded right here you can see it here okay so this is what we're going to see how to download list box sorry how to download some json data from online and then render in a list box now this is the url in fact let's go ahead and check it out so i can just come copy it and then bring it in my browser so that we can see the json data that we're going to work with so we're basically going to have a list of users which we're going to map into a class okay a data object or model class now you can see this is the data that we're having okay so we'll be interested in the names that's what we're going to be showing however we're also going to get the ids and i think probably the email okay so this is it guys this is what we're going to look at let's start by introducing flal now flal this of course is an as you can see right here it's just an http client library for .NET. okay so it's very very easy to use it allows us to write of course a synchronous testable portable um http clients uh, for .NET right here okay so it's the library that we're going to use and first of course we can we to install it we can get it from the new get so we're going to see how to install it we can install it of course from the new get you can see the latest version is version 2.4 so if you want to install flal of course via the package manager you just copy this particular command so you come inst copy it okay install package flal.http then of course you proceed over to your visual studio so let me just stop this one so in our visual studio you come to your visual studio then of course you're going to come to the tools and then go over to your new, new get package manager then come to the package manager console so inside this console is going to initialize it for us basically um, a powershell then of course we paste that particular um, right here okay this particular command so install package flal http then of course you can also specify the version so once it's initialize it you come and then paste it right here okay so go ahead paste it paste that particular command right here install and then of course click enter and that will install for you the flal of course into a project okay so once you've done that one then we can proceed so our first step of course is to create the project so go ahead in your visual studio choose c sharp then choose the console application then type your application name of course you choose the location then click ok so once we've done that one then of course this is going to generate for you an empty console application okay so first remember we've already installed our flal http you can see we have it right here okay flal then flal.http now the next step of course is to come to our program.cs which is our file our main and only file program.cs and first and foremost we're going to start by specifying our imports so we're going to add right here you can see system.windows system.threading okay system.drawing etc now just come to your references first and then right click and then click add reference then of course we'll need to actually add them from our framework library so come right here and search windows okay so once you search windows come check the system dot windows dot forms and also come here and search drawing and check the system dot drawing and then click ok so that their references can be added right here okay then of course we can then import them via the using directive so once you've done that one then you can now come and then create our list box 
now by there we are working with the windows form from scratch we are not using any designer okay so we just want to wrap everything in this single file so first and foremost our role will be to create a POCO class okay a plain old CLR object so we come right here in this case is going to represent a single a single user a user object we saw the user of course in our JSON data now every user will have an ID that ID can, we can get it or set it the user will have a name we can get and set it and he will also have an email which we can also get or set then we've that's our user object okay then we can have our program which will be our main class now first and foremost you're going to maintain a static synchronization context within this particular class then we'll also come and have this async method which we are calling the download json data so download json data will be responsible for downloading our json data in the background thread so we come we this is how we're going to do it await task to run then of course async then of course we come this is how we actually download data so basically we use we have our wait right here and then we pass in the url https json presola.tpcode.com slash users then we invoke the get json async okay then we pass in the generic type which of course will be a list of users now we're going to hold it in this particular users and in fact this right here will be responsible for downloading for us our list of users and holding it asynchronously okay holding it in this list of user objects then of course we can then loop through our users or iterate them so for each user user in users then synchronization context dot post then of course we come right here you can see we are passing in the user dot name because this is what we're going to be posting of course into a list box into a user interface okay so my list box this will be our list box we'll create it in a short while so my list box the items the third then we come right here we have our value which is an object we cast it to a string given that it will be the name we're going to get the name okay now that will be added as an item in our list box then once we've done that one we're going to catch any exception while trying to do this process if we have any we're going to show it in a message box then of course we're going to have our list box right here so we have it as a static read only object so list box new list box then of course we specify its location using a point struct so 30 70 x and y axis will be 30 and 70 respectively then of course the size will have of course the width and height 500 and 400 respectively then of course our font we'll use the generic sans serif and then a font size of 15 so once we've done that one then of course we're going to have this method called my list box selected index change this is going to be our event handler okay our selected index change so basically if the selected item the selected items list index changes then this method will get raised so we'll see how to mark it as our event handler in a short while so we come right here what will we do here well we're going to get that selected index inside a try catch block then of course we'll check if that selected index is not called to negative one then we're going to show it in a message box okay otherwise we catch an argument out of range exception then of course we're going to have this method called create form now this method is responsible as the name suggests for creating our form okay because this is a windows form so first we're going to uh, initialize our synchronization context by assigning it the current synchronization context dot current then of course remember this synchronization context is what will allow us to post our updates of course into the user interface from the background thread okay so we come we instantiate our form object then of course we pass in the properties first the text property then the client size then the background color then of course we're going to now uh, assign mark this one as our event handler you can see right here so we come my list box the selected index change so what you do is you type plus then equal to 
and then if you press your tab key twice then of course this is going to generate for you the infant handler template okay so basically type this one my list box the selected in the exchange then type plus then equal to then you press your tab key twice then it will generate for us the event handler so basically in this case we've registered that method as our event handler and then we're going to add our um, list box of course into our controls then of course we're going to enable the ritual styles and then of course run our form using the run method okay so that will do for us then of course we're going to have our main method so in the main method first we're going to invoke the download json data and then we're going to invoke the create form method okay and in fact that is what we have to do right here so go ahead just click the start and run of course this is going to download our data in the background thread okay if you have um internet connectivity on and of course we've already shown the demo so like this particular video and make sure you subscribe to our channel program users tv we're going to post the source code in our website https camposha.info otherwise take care i'll catch you in the next class